Here we go for another live. It should be a good one tonight. So another live this evening. We've had a good day as well. Hello everyone. So uh, you're tuning into another podcast, Landscapers Life. And I'm really much looking forward to this one. Um, you'll have to stay tuned and see the guests uh, that we have on. I'm going to invite them now, so bear with me. Here we go. Invite, invite. Hopefully it comes through. And yeah, um, we're going to talk about landscape design, relationship with landscaper and designer. We're going to talk about show gardens. We're going to talk about lots of things. So, yeah, it should be a really interesting one. I had a good day. Hopefully, you all had a good day out there and not too rainy. Hey, everyone. I'm going to chuck some waves at people. Um, let me try to invite them again. So, Lucy was not able to come on. Let's try again. Hey, Lucy, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are yeah, you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Good to see you. How was your day? Yeah, it was good, thanks. Yeah, pretty busy again. No, that's well, good. And, and the weather is not helping well, anyone, is it? It's really bad at the moment. Tomorrow, I think tomorrow looks okay on Friday. No, that, that would be good. Yeah. We, need, yeah. we need some good weather. Um, let me invite Dan. I just chucked him a request. Hopefully, he can figure it out. Um, so, um, yeah, the weather. I mean, we'll talk about the weather. But how, you how are you? Hi, Els. I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very well. Yeah. Good to see you. Good. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, dried out now. So really bad today. Yeah. So the rain. I mean, the rain has just been a nightmare this year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been rough, isn't it? It's been proper rough, and not just like work-wise, but I was saying to Dan when I had you on the phone, the, the morale, uh, keeping people, you know, motivated, all, all your lads, and, and keeping the projects moving on, and delays, and that's no, just such a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it is hard, isn't it, to try and keep you, stay positive, and like you say, especially with the lads, I mean, our lads are great, but they... Um, it, you, you, I think as as the owner of the business as well, you struggle sometimes to stay positive, yeah. don't you? And you don't want to, it to rub off on the lads as well. So no, yeah. no it's important. <laughs> but uh, thank you for both of you for uh, coming on tonight and taking your evening to chat yeah. to, to me and uh, and have an evening. You know, landscaping, designing, and lots of conversations. So I, I really appreciate. It. So I'm going to do a little introduction for people tuning in. So this is Landscapers Live, uh, a podcast I do every other Wednesday. And we have people like yourself, designers, landscapers, suppliers. And um, and yeah, I do it because I like chatting about it. So why not talk about it every other week on that on Instagram. So tonight we have Lucy Brownton. So um, let's start with your, yourself. So a little introduction about you your company um you know a little bit about you uh, and your company basically yeah sure um i'm lucy brabington I, I set up my design company 15 years ago um i started out after doing um business degree i worked for a design and build company and studied at pershaw i think dan studied there as well um not at the same time, but yeah, studied there and then set up my business, um, predominantly design private yeah. gardens, do a bit of commercial work. Roughly, how many years ago was it? Uh, 15 years ago. It was 2009 I set up yeah. the company. Um, and yeah, a few years in, I kind of decided I wanted to also work alongside my design work and I got a job at Hardscape who supply um, 
natural stone paving they they supply to commercial projects so that was really really good to learn about that side of the supply chain i was constantly meeting up with architects councils uh contractors so i i was looking at drawings as well constantly and specifications so that was really good um and then i worked also after that after four years um at a plant nursery um again it was commercial supply so meeting up again with architects councils but talking about the soft landscape side of things yeah. but all all this time i was also building up my business in the background kind of working evenings weekends yeah. going to see clients um and then in 2019 that's when i went full-time design and that's when dan and i teamed up and did our apl avenue show garden yeah. um and that did really well and then yeah uh then four years later we did our show garden together last year yeah. i'm sure we'll, we'll get on to that but yeah just been busy designing for all that time no, i can't believe it's been that long it feels like all the, the previous job before you setting your business were, was you know uh, quite related to to what you do now uh, and if anything it's kind of brought so some skills i'm sure to to what you do now and so some knowledge uh, you yeah know, definitely you know in that, in that aspect of you know supplying stone to nurseries that's just like what you do now but in a different way isn't it yeah it was really good to get that insight and we learn all the kind of british standards for paving for all the commercial projects and got to visit quarries and factories all around the world really so that it was amazing and yeah brilliant knowledge oh, cool. and went to lots of events and built contacts it was great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you and you love it you, you obviously love the industry and love love what you do now as well yeah yeah love it yeah i've loved, oh, loved all of it the wow. design though predominantly loving doing that full time yeah, yeah yeah that's good and uh so thank you for that uh lucy what about yourself then so you're from design it um and yeah, I know that it's you and your brother in the company. It is, uh, yeah, it is. But I don't, um, you know, tell us more about when you started and, you know, yes. all that good so, stuff. Um, like, like Lucy, I, I um, trained at um, Pershaw College. I left left school and went, went, into, uh, went to college at Pershaw and studied horticulture with, with the design aspect as well, um, which is what I always sort of enjoyed, the design side. Um, and then went on to uh, yeah, did did uh, a national diploma in HND at Pershaw, and then went on to work with uh, a local company doing some sort of, uh, on the tools, you know, land, landscaping wise. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided to go self-employed, um, probably naively at the time, really. But um, yeah, so went off, went off on my own, but ended up contracting out to various other other uh, landscapers sort of locally um yeah. where we, we did all sorts of projects really varying from you know small sort of townhouse gardens in birmingham to natural swimming pools and so, so some quite interesting work um so then after that this was probably uh 2013 was when i properly decided to build the brand what is now design it yeah um where we so we started off sort of thinking well, we'll we'll do design build and then we've sort of gravitated a bit more these days towards doing more build work than design build yeah. um matt as you mentioned matt you know my brother works with me we we sort of never really had the intention of working together he'll openly admit that <laughs> <laughs> but um we we sort of um it, it came about probably about seven eight years ago now and um, and yeah it works it works really well in fairness um you know we we get on and uh you, it's nice to have someone you can fully 100 percent trust yeah 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 so yeah well, it's hard because you know working with family um i've done it i when i set up my company um it was like a garden company we did a lot of maintenance and stuff like that and my brother uh, came back from france and helped me for a while so i was employing my older brother at the time and we used to run the business from uh, from home and we, we we used 
we love each other. We're one year apart and we love each other, but we used to have the biggest punch ups. As in, <laughs> you know, I, I, my wife used to look at it and think like, are you guys all right? <laughs> but that's what we did from being little to, to still an adult. So uh, working with you probably can be challenging, but um, sorry to cut you uh, on, on what you were saying. I just had to get that out. It's no, not really I, I, good to let out. I agree. <laughs> We, we have our moments. Uh, we, I think everyone does with family, don't they? But uh, yes. no, it, it, it is good. And he, I mean, he, he, he trained in um, arboriculture. So we, yeah. we don't really do any more, any, any tree work anymore, but it's good that we've able to offer that um, sort of, you know, uh, knowledge, knowledge as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, after he, after Matt joined, it sort of grew really. And we started working for a lot more uh, designers uh, doing their own build projects and then subsequently getting involved in shows um, which I'm sure like Lucy said we'll probably get into a bit yeah. more in, in a bit. Oh that's amazing so just as an insight um, how many people do you have uh, uh, in your company at the moment Dan? Uh, so there's uh, myself and Matt and we, we've got three lads um, on yeah. the books at the moment we, we did we did go up to eight um of us uh, about 18 months two years ago yeah. but for various reasons it didn't it either didn't work out or we scaled back um yeah. and in some ways we stayed almost as productive um yeah. so yeah uh, streamlined a little bit in some ways yeah. i think it's a, it's a good time to to run on a lean team anyway um at the moment but um i think in business especially in landscaping you always have those ups and downs of stuff um, and retention is yeah. hard and it's a hard job. So, you know, as long as you've got a good core team, then, you know, when you're busy, if you have to pull a few more people in, it, it, you're able to do that. But um, that's interesting. So anyway, let's kick off. Now we know, you know, we broke the ice a little bit. We know a bit about yourselves and what you do. So we've got a designer and we've got a landscaper. And you know, people watching might think, why, why did I get those two people together on the same evening? So the reason why is I've met both of you uh, last year at uh, the BBC Garners Live in Birmingham. And we, I, I was helping John uh, from Outdoor Living uh, on the opposite side uh, of the garden you were building. Um, and I really enjoyed watching both of you create the garden that you did. Uh, Dan, you had a great team there uh, that I can see working really hard. And when Lucy, you were there, you were very busy with all your plants and just, you know, getting all stuck in. And I, I, I really enjoyed looking at that garden come to life. Um, so I, I think I mentioned it to you back then. I was like, oh, what that would be a great idea to have you both on at the same time to just get a feel of how you built built this little relationship between each other you know designer landscaper to create such a beautiful garden and and, and working well together so my first question obviously you kind of answered it already but is how did you guys meet for you know what was the first meeting as in, was it you, uh, Lucy, who went, oh, you know, I've heard about uh, design it and I'm doing this garden. How, how, did, it, how did it happen? Um, I think it was the year before we perhaps did the APL Avenue, I think, Dan. When I was, I visited Garden as well during the build with uh, Jamie Butterworth, I yeah. think it was. Yeah, and I just was, yeah. briefly chatted to you then. And then we met up, I don't know, maybe six months later at one of the APL clusters yeah. and got on well and, and you suggested why don't we team up I think and, and do an APL yeah. avenue and that, that was it really. I think it was uh, Phil Tremaine whispering in my ear saying Tick, find a designer do an, do an APL avenue garden which was and, and we, we've always sort of liked Lucy's sort of uh, design style and work so yeah. I think it was yeah it seemed like a, if you you know if you're going to collaborate on a show you want to try and work with someone whose work you like and would enjoy to build yes yeah so you kind of started through i guess the apl then yeah and that's, um, that's and that's, a bit together 
Dan has yeah. obviously done quite a few show gardens as well, and that was my first. So it, I thought it was a, it's a good, it's a good team because he yeah, can. Yeah. Add, yeah, he's got loads of experience in the shows. Huh? Okay, so so how many gardens did you do previous of me, meeting Lucy Dan? Um, we we helped on several others and then prior to the 2018 we did our own design build at Malvern okay, well, um, which was yeah thro thrown in the deep end really but um, yeah. I mean when when I was a student we ended up down at Chelsea and doing various things like that but it's a bit different when you're a student to doing it obviously when you're running the job and yeah running the business and uh, yeah. all the rest yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh cool so so then okay you you guys met and you were like yo let's do this project let's do APR Avenue what's well, actually quite fun because I'm doing APR Avenue this year yeah. uh, and it's going to be yeah, the first, first show it's garden yeah I know I am so much buzzing right now I am just so excited because I got a little flavour last year and and I, it really lit up something inside you know it's like a little want to get stuck in and I, you know what i love the most the community around it mm -hmm. yeah. you know the people all sharing the same passion and this you know it's, it's a it's a burning passion to want to do something really well really detailed and working yeah together to, to get to that point i think it's it's beautiful i, lo I love it so anyway distraction you guys met and you're like yeah let's do this so how did that relationship, did you soon find out, you know, what was the challenges, what was the hurdles you guys had to cross together as a team? Um, and, and if so, those challenges, how did you cross them? I mean, I, from, from the build point of view with that show garden, I think, it, I mean, it's like it is now. It was just torrential bloody rain. Oh, yeah. Terrible, that was it? the biggest so challenge. I think that was the biggest challenge for both of us. Just, yeah, yeah, I'd block that out, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, was, it was very wet. It was yeah. wet. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't seem to remember having many. I think the yeah we didn't seem to be many challenges other than the weather was, Lucy might say maybe weather. maybe on the first wasn't the plot slightly different with that we had to retain that side yeah there was bit, didn't we retain retaining the bank and there was a, a large sort of uh drainage like culvert at the back of the garden oh, yeah. really foreseen um so yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was always oh, something oh, oh, i lost you there i i, I think um no, no, uh, Birmingham BBC Live there. The plot is quite tricky because mm. they're, you know, they've got, like you say, they've got a bit of a uh, build up, haven't they? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it, there's quite a level change on the site. It's deceptive. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's like those buns, are, you know, they're like little mounds. It could have been a flat plot if they wanted to, but they definitely added to the challenge. But, um, um, yeah, so you guys obviously gone through some challenges, the, the rain, and, and then you did your first garden uh, on APR Avenue. And, and after that, how many more did you do uh, until last year's, let's say? I didn't do any in between, but no. Dan, Dan did. Yeah, Dan's done a few in between. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, Lucy, so that, that first one was, was that your first show, garden? The yeah, that's, yeah, that was the first one, and we got platinum and best construction, so I set the bar yeah. quite high. So I was almost a bit scared to go again for a bit. <laughs> so, so, so your second uh, show garden was last year's. Yeah, yeah, that was what? last year. Oh. Ah, you know, Just, wow, that's cool. So nice. I did not know again. Did not know that. I thought you guys done, you know, a lot together it, it felt like that way you know the way you guys worked on site and the, the way it was all, all done it, it seemed that you guys had um, had done it many times before so no fair play to you guys um yeah well, we get on really we get on well and yeah dan's team are all great i love working yeah. with them so um so, perhaps that was perhaps it was that we all get on really well yeah i mean 
That helps, right? That, that helps. Yeah. And, and so we talk a lot on this on this podcast about that relationship between designer and landscaper. And and I want to touch a little bit on that since we're talking about it a bit. And I, you know, I think it can be hard because we, we, we're we there together to do the same kind of finish, but we, it's two different ways of thinking, right? So you've got a landscaper is very practical and, you know, he's got this kind of builder in him and the designers, uh, you know, they've got the design in their heads, they've got the vision, they've got all of that in their minds. So what do you reckon makes a good collaboration you know is it you know this is the design i'll give it to you just go with it you know you know lucy what what does make a good landscaper for you to work with um well dan's background is design so he's already got that um way of thinking he's not purely practical he's got the creative side as well um and communication is always key with any contractors i work with i do speak to them a lot yeah. and go to site if necessary and work out any solutions that for issues that might have cropped up um yeah and and in the build up to the show build period we we talked a lot and mm-hmm. sorted out a lot, as much as we could prior to the build at the um at the NEC so I think that all helps yeah I think having those conversations is so vital isn't it and balance yeah. of each other's strengths and and you know you know should we do it this way yeah let's do it this way or change or tweak this so I think that yeah the, the first positive thing you would say is having you know those lines of conversation when and truly open then yeah and, and obviously with the show garden, the, the contractor's name is on the board as well. It's not all about the designer, which the con- contractors can often get a bit um, pushed to the sidelines in some of these shows. The APL Avenue is really good because it's showcasing the contractor a lot as well. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's important for the contractor to do well on the shows. Yeah. They're, they obviously really care about the outcome yeah. as well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think I think that's nice to to say it as well. To you know, obviously you couldn't do it without a designer because yeah, the designer absolutely. makes this beautiful design. But at the same time, you can do it without the landscaper. So I think that collaboration is just so you know, it just, hand in hand is symbiotic. You know, is 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 yeah, it's needed. And what about you? What's your your views on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we we, we can't do it without each other. Um, I mean, we we try before we get onto site to iron out or foresee as many potential issues as possible. Um, I mean, there's always it, it, with Lucy. I mean, a, a, a prime example on the on the Highline Garden. You know, we had these um, timber sleepers within the paving. Yeah. Um, and it was as part of the design. And then we sort of, you know, it, Lucy was flexible with it, with, it, with regards of sort of saying, actually, we don't necessarily need those anymore. Um, and if we put them in, are we sort of thinking, well, is the timber going to expand contract? Do we need to think about that? Are they going to judge us down for that? So there's, there's various things you need to sort of run through, but you, you need the designers to be not just helping on their design and their sort of vision. You've got to, be willing to tweak uh, yeah. as you go, really. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's nice. I mean, the, the the designer that I'm going to work with for the APR Avenue, it's been a lot like that. You know, we've been talking about everything, and we've got this wooden structure, and it's, you know, I, I said, oh, we can burn it, you know, char it, and then sand it back. And you know, when a designer like, bounce off and, yeah, yo, let's <laughs> do that. That's a yeah. good idea. Like that, we don't have to have paint or you know, it's more sustainable and, yeah. you know, I think having those, those conversation, like you say, this year, is so vital and it makes, it makes it enjoyable for everyone, doesn't it? It makes it really enjoyable for everyone. Yeah, I think everyone has their own stamp on it then, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. like that, you get, you get, you know, the strong design 
from the from the passionate designer with the the help of the the landscaper and his build and it just makes a a, a great combination so obviously i, I saw the, the pictures but I, you know it was i think it was on the, on your instagram that when i was scrolling through uh and you guys have like a, a team picture and you both look a bit younger actually <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and um i noticed the garden had loads of planks on the, on the, on the oh, well, it, yeah it had like benches yeah, yeah, yeah. is that what you yeah. mean yeah it, it looked really nice but um, if we can talk a bit more about last year's garden, because that's more uh, recent. So I'm going to tell you what I loved about it, and then you can tell me what your opinion. I love how it was formal. It was formal, the planting, the courtyard, and this conversation is going to lead to another question, but anyway, we'll come back to that. But my, I love that, you know, the, the central feature, the statue, um, it was well built and i remember one point obviously the, the design love it so well done Thanks. lucy but <laughs> i i um i was working on the opposite garden and i must have had a little break i was probably sitting down tired of laying those those stone walls and whatnot and i looked and you guys down i can remember you were standing back i don't know if you can remember you were standing back and you were laying the you know the marshall sets oh yeah yeah in, yeah in front and you had the water reel uh, in between yeah and you had you had uh, lines pulled out and you were tweaking them like, i'm talking millimeters <laughs> and it was yeah. three of you you were all three on your knees yeah i yeah. can just picture it and i was like wow yeah this is going to be millimeter perfect yeah. right yeah, um, there was no tolerance in that and those those sets were a nightmare they they were in i mean obviously the design had them in, in stat bond yeah and then I, I mean i spent i think i spent about two hours the night before measuring them all trying to get them right and ban them yeah yeah um, yeah details matter you know, it, it matters uh, yeah and that was a bit of a like a a light bulb you know moment i was like wow that team had just been so precise and and it's funny because when I, I met you at the the APL the the, the awards then yeah you said that to me you said detail really really matter so uh, anyway I'll pass it over to you but I I love that garden I love watching it and I was lucky enough to see it kind of evolve and see uh uh, seen it get built and I think that tickles me because I'm a landscaper so to see the process it was really enjoyable but yeah well done on the design Thanks. so can you tell me more about about the garden can you tell me a little bit how it happened uh how was it built from your point of view how was it designed in it I, I just want to know a bit more um yeah the 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 show kind of teamed me up with Lizelle Beauty they were the sponsors yeah. so the brief was to kind of design the space to tie in with their brand and their products so it's a skincare brand and they use a lot of botanical ingredients yeah. so i used um a lot of their ingredients within the space um like rosemary lavender aloe vera borage because they use borage oil in a lot of the products things like that and eucalyptus they were the main there were the two um, trees either side of yeah. the entrance. Um, their head office is in the Isle of Wight, so it had quite a coastal feel, but um, not kind of twee with ropes, like not old school. <laughs> it's right. like linked with the gravel because the gravel was um, crushed shells. Yeah. Um, that's why the sculpture was a shell. Um, as the main focal point yeah. um and also because it's a british brand that's why i had it quite formal and regimented yeah. and symmetrical to kind of hark back to traditional english gardens yes with lots of symmetry uh and the reel down the center was to draw your eye to the sculpture at the back and but also to kind of tie in with the cleansing nature of a lot of their products within their yeah. skincare uh, and the polished pebbles, which were at the front, the seats, 
one of their iconic products is called Cleanse and Polish. Okay. So the real was kind of cleanse and the pebbles were polished. Oh, and nice. also so, tied it back to the postal theme. It's interesting. So when you hear it from uh, a designer's point of view, when they design, you know, you know, when you look at a garden, you look at every element and you think it's beautiful, it works together. But you've obviously designed all those elements have, you know, yeah, there was a lot in it. in it. It's a lot in it, isn't it? It's not just like, yeah, let's make a beautiful uh, space that works and this is, you know, you've obviously got a sponsor with a meaning and you're mm -hmm. kind of taking those little elements and injecting them in, in, in the design. What's really cool. Yeah, Very yeah. Cool. It, was, it was a nice brand to work for. They were really good. Most of the discussions in the design stage were over zoom so that was i found that quite hard to get kind of feedback yeah i prefer it in person for something so major but yeah. it, they loved it they were so pleased with the garden and the results so that was great that's amazing what about you uh, uh dan so how was the field it was really hot that's what i can remember mm -hmm. um, yeah it was so no rain <laughs> <laughs> well you say you say that we the first, like when we were, we, there was a like, large sort of r runs of pleached trees that framed the garden. And when, yeah. when we were putting those pleached trees in, it was like gale force winds. So we were, we were panicking. We, we got, Platypus had donated a load of anchors for the trees themselves. And, yeah. and then we'd, we'd anchored them, but they were still sort of almost at 45 degrees blowing, blowing around. So we, we ended up having to, drive in rebar and ratchet strap them so we were having to eye them in straight and ratchet strap them to tension them so that they wouldn't move and bury it all so it was and then after all that the the heat wave came and uh, there was no more wind so yeah, yeah. um but at least we knew they weren't moving yeah um, yeah so yeah. I, I i mean from that garden from a, a contractor's point of view as well with you know the the whole with the, the best construction side the award side yeah it was nice because it wasn't necessarily a garden that was heavy on hard landscaping it was a lot of detail but the, it was nice that they sort of recognized with the amount of tree planting that we'd done and that it was all quite clean and crisp um, yeah. that it, it, it was reflected in that really yeah no it was really nice to, to see come to life so well done to both of you on that garden and you deserve you know every you know pride and whatever you want to call it you, you should take it it, it, it was Hi. lovely to watch so anyway but not, my last question about show gardens and then i'll leave you alone <laughs> about the show gardens <laughs> is what's next are, are we going to see another collaboration from you two um is there anything in the pipelines that you you're willing to share if you're not that's fine but um yeah interesting to know if you guys are going to do i you know something else together or on your own i'm sure we will yeah do some more together in the future i'd, I'd love to okay. i haven't got any show gardens planned at the moment um but my next step would hopefully be um malvern and yeah team up with dan hopefully again yeah we're um we, we actually break ground at malvern on monday okay. uh we're doing do doing one for somebody else which is exciting yeah um so yeah last last minute planning and uh yeah wow. head scratching and, yeah so no it's exciting but yeah def definitely need to do another one with lucy yeah. um yeah we it, it works well as a team and um we, we have fun so uh it's what it's about isn't it yeah, yeah. Exactly. Have fun, create a beautiful space and enjoy it. Yeah, well, that's good. Well, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what you create uh, at Malvern then. That should be a good one. Yeah, well. it should be good. Yeah, it's um, a bit smaller than the one that we did last year at Gardens World Live. Yeah. But um, again, it's got it's got a reel in it. So we love a reel. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice water challenge. All right, that's good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. And uh, I might give you both a call when uh, I'm doing a APR Avenue. I'll be like, oh, I need help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, obviously, show gardens, we enjoy it. We all thrive. To, uh, I think if you if you love the industry, we all look at some of the, the work people do at Chelsea. And we're all very inspired uh, by show gardens. I, don't, I know that I am 
getting more and more inspired by them. But enough of that. So the, the next question would be really, you know, what is your favorite, you know, in, in, in the industry, what's your favorite kind of garden to design for yourself, you see? Or all, all you, you as well, Dan, because you do a bit of design as well. What is your favorite style? What, you know, because we're seeing a lot, obviously it is client-based, what client wants and, you know, delivering the, that demand. But, you know, are you more, you know, traditional, more modern, you know, more courtyardy, more, you know, what is your, your favorite style of garden to, 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 to make and to design? Um, mine's probably a combination of the two show gardens I've done. Yeah. So the first one was really contemporary. That was based or uh, inspired by the High Line. So that's super, in, quite industrial, contemporary. But then combined with the kind of elegance and symmetry and formality of the second one. Yeah. So I, I really like a lot of, in the soft landscaping, I like structure with multi-stem trees and hedging interspersed with blocks of grasses and perennials so you've got that structure year round but then a lot of color and texture in the spring summer yeah. and then materials i prefer natural stone i do use a lot of porcelain um but i do prefer natural stone and having learned so much about it when i worked for the suppliers yes. and visited quarries and it's just much more interesting all the geology within natural stone yeah i can i can totally agree with you with, with that 100 yeah i'm so done with porcelain i'm so done with porcelain like you know it, it, it's it's a fantastic material but it's hard to work with as well it's not very forgiving yeah. you know it, it's obviously we have, we've had this big boom haven't we of porcelain everywhere it's still there and, and don't get me wrong i think it's got a huge space in the market and especially people that that want something to look good and come out once in a while and clean it and it comes up like brand new um but i think you know natural stone is so more workable isn't it it's just it's yeah. just something i think that like, i was i was all excited about porcelain it's like yay let, let's yeah. go you know let, let's <laughs> mind everything let's become tilers now <laughs> But now I'm not really that changing my mind. We've really. we, we've noticed a hell of a lot more. We, we're we're doing a lot more sort of uh, either sawn limestone or sandstone, or yeah. and actually a lot more reclaimed uh, stone as well. Nice. Um, and it's it's nice. I mean, like as you say, you know, don't mind working with porcelain. Happy to you know and enjoy it when we do it. But yeah. it, it it has just been a bit of um an onslaught of uh, porcelain work. And yeah, so it's it's nice to be back doing a lot more natural stone, especially the reclaimed products as well. So Yeah, nice. Uh, and what about what style of gardens? So, uh, Dan, are you, are you more, like, obviously, traditional, reclaimed, natural um, stones? Probably, probably or, quite or... a similar so sort of design style. Or, or I'm in mean, my own garden. Yeah, it's a bit, bit more modern or a bit more like Lucy sort of, the style of the, the last garden we did with Lucy, really. Yeah, yeah that, that sort of, um that would be my sort of Go what i prefer but i yeah. mean i i think with uh you know we as contractors i i don't necessarily just want to fall into the habit of just building the same sort the of type of garden no. um no. you know it's nice we, we're on a, a large project at the moment where we're doing reclaim yorkstone reclaim brickwork pavers uh but then you know in 12 months time we could be on something where we're doing porcelain and all, all like as you say mitres resin mm, yeah. all those all day. So it's nice to have that variety, really. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, it's definitely like a style of garden. I, I like a courtyard. Mm. I like a courtyard, quite formal, mm. you know, quite small as well, because, you know, some of the big projects, you get lost in, you know, 100 square metres of paving, and then you need to wait for furniture to dress it and pots. And, but a courtyard, you get this instant kind of, like, feel for it you know you're you're kind of creating a little space uh they're, they're always my you know my favorite element of jobs because on those big jobs you always have a courtyard somewhere mm. <laughs> yeah so uh, 
I, I do enjoy those. Um, but yeah, going back on the, on materials, really. So both of you work with you know so many different arrays of materials, and we can see they're evolving, they're changing constantly. Uh, obviously, trends and this, and you know, I, I'm seeing you know a lot more shapes and size and large format and tiny little pavers and so you know how do you you know evolve with that as a designer as a landscaper how do you keep you know keep on evolving with the change and the demand from clients and and suppliers saying yo we we, we got new materials you, you really want to be trying this what what's your your go-to or do you stick to things that you know I try and use different materials as well because I know that the guys on site will will get bored just using yeah. the same stuff. So that's one element of why I switch things up. But it, yeah, it just depends on the brief, really. Um, I use a lot more clay pavers. Um, at the moment, clients are really liking those. Um, but yeah, I just I keep up to date with all the new products yeah, um yeah. from suppliers and go to events so you're always there's so much choice out there yeah, um yeah, yeah. it's constantly evolving yeah I, but there I, definitely is a trend for natural stone i think and clays yeah. yeah i quite like the, the fact that it's always new things coming in because like you say it's it's new techniques with mm -hmm. this yeah it's uh you know it, you, you evolve your skill range and, and, and yeah, I quite like it as well. Yeah, it's it's nice because you you're constantly learning, like you say, new techniques, and you know it's um yeah, and like Lucy says, you you don't want to be using the same materials all the time. No, but, yeah, you've been yeah. as as contractors, we want to build gardens that don't look all all identical and. No, exactly that, exactly that. You know what I did recently? I, I um I'm on this big driveway project, and it's granite, and it's. You know, it's lovely, but I'm like so done with it. You know, it's 400 square meters of like small cobbles and planks. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm doing everything else on a job to avoid going back and laying the last portion of the job. It's so bad. So like today I, I had a van come in and I was like, I'm going to get, a, you know, the client was a, a meadow done at the back. Like, I'm going to do that today because I, I can't be asked anymore. more. more Have a break. I am so done. But you know what I did? And this is going back on the, the natural stone that what we we're talking about is we had this drain in the, 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 in the porch, if you like, and the gutter comes in the porch for some reason. Uh, and above, it's only like a Juliet balcony. And I cut a perfect circle out of granite and I took a bowl out, so I showed Yeah, I saw it. your video, it looks so cool. Yeah, but that, that is the thing, natural stone, you can have such a yeah. fiddle with, you can just be so, you can be so creative with natural stone because it's so forgiving, mm -hmm. you know, you can shake, you can, you can cut easily. Um, honestly, like porcelain, you, you move one one wrong side, you get a chip, and it's you know you start again. With this, is just so forgiving. So, I, I would like to see more and more um, natural stone, and I think what would make it quite interesting is to design it in really large formats. So, you know, like have like one twenty by one twenty slabs. Uh, York stone or sandstone or limestone, but just to kind of make it, you know, exciting still. We're still using sawn stone or, or that's, whatever. Um, that's, that's actually what I've put down in my own garden, 1200 yeah. by 1200. Yeah, some, some Marshall stuff. We had it from a show and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. And um, yeah. It's nice, isn't it? It, it? it gives you this big kind of like tile look, but it's natural stone. You can, you can play about with it. It's much easier to work with and all the rest. So, um, yeah, bring on back natural stone. That's what we're saying. So, obviously, natural stone, materials, all that stuff, current market, current climate. This brings me to this kind of question at the moment. So, you know, at the moment, 
this is probably the last harsh question, the hard to answer maybe, or, you know, let's come up with some solutions. I don't know. But at the moment, the current climate is quite touch and go, I would say, money-wise. Yeah. Uh, I certainly felt like a shift in how my clients or the client base that I normally deal with uh, are with their money. So obviously, you know, we're hitting a recession, you know, for me, it's probably my first recession as a business owner, right? So, you know, and for many business owners out there uh, are feeling the, pan, the pinch, sorry. So have you felt it? And if so, what's your kind of shift on that? So have you shifted slightly your pricing or your approach with materials uh, or design? So have you felt it at all, you guys? Um, I've, I think we, we have a bit. We've noticed that inquiries have sort of tailed off. I mean, yeah. our, our sort of projects, are, a lot of our work has, you know, comes, comes through from designers. Yes. So, um, and a lot of the time people are serious about their investment because they've invested in a designer. Yes. Um, so we, we, you know, we've got a few inquiries that we're sort of muddling through at the moment, uh, which are quite large projects. Yeah. And since we're quite a small team, that'll keep us busy for well, 18 months or so. Chunk. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps us busy for a good chunk. So we're, we're not exactly concerned, but, we have definitely noticed that the, the the inquiries are sort of slowing down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Th I think I think part of it also is the whole with with the whole COVID situation. It was a a boom, wasn't it? Boom. So yeah. So it sort of feels a lot quieter in some ways than it probably is, maybe. Yeah. Um, After every big boom, you have a, a come down, I guess. You know, you know, it needs to 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 mellow out and settle out. Um, what about you, uh, Lucy? What what have you felt recently? Yeah, the same really. Um, it's still very busy, but it's not as crazy as it was yeah. during and after COVID, which was a bit overwhelming during yeah. that time. Um, I had a kind of six month waiting list after that for about two years. So I've, I've caught up now. So that just shows that it has leveled out a bit. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, still, uh, I, yeah still busy but people are definitely more cautious um and i'm getting since the kind of covid boom i put loads more information on my website just to deal with the amount of inquiries so i direct people there so all of that's it all that information is still there but recently i've had a few inquiries that have said oh i've been on your website and i don't think i can afford it but now that i'm a bit quiet bit quieter i can actually speak to them more and just make sure that their space isn't quite small and perhaps the parameters on my questionnaire yeah. might be too extreme because yeah. i've i kind of the lowest budget for tick for the build on my questionnaire is forty thousand. Yeah. um so a lot of people go on there and go oh gosh i haven't got that much to spend but then yeah. If they've got a small space, it might still be doable. So I'm still I'm exploring those inquiries more now than I perhaps would have been after COVID. Yeah, I mean that's it. It's kind of like covering every aspect, you know, all the, the mm -hmm. small jobs and, and the big jobs, and and covering all of that. I find that um, you know filtering through those inquiries and make sure you know you're not wasting your time as well is yeah. important. Yeah. time management and all that good stuff but um for us at the moment it's like you guys we're busy we're lucky we do big jobs and they keep us busy for a long time and uh, a bit like you Dan we, we run a quite lean team at the moment it's only six of us so you know we're going to keep it like that for the time being but on Instagram I get quite um, a lot of messaging re recently with younger landscapers that run smaller jobs that uh, I'm running out of work some yeah. and, and yeah. You, know, it, you know it's always interesting to see that and because you know you get a couple messages from those kind of landscapers or, or, or it kind of always like rings alarm bells because their work is decent and they're, they're running out of work and you think wow yeah. so um, you know I think for and what I tend to do when I get messages like this you know have you got in touch with local designers, you know, always 
push yourself out there and be proactive about it. You know, if you can feel like it's slowing down and the work is not coming in, what can you do to, to make sure it comes in? Because it's always, it's always work out there. It's, it's knowing how to get it and how to market yourself. Um, so, you know, no, no, no. step to step, kind of how do you go about it when it, it, it slows down? How do you market yourself more? You know, is it on social media? Is it reaching out like APL saying, listen, we've got some availability. Um, you know, if you have any projects that you need designers, you know, I'm in this catchment area, you know, what do you guys do for, for people to know it? What would you do in their situation kind of thing? I think, I think as you say, really, yeah, net, network APL, I mean, as a, as an association, it's really benefited our business. Yeah. Um, and we've gained not only sort of uh, uh, builds at show gardens and, and networking through that, but also bigger, uh, uh, more interesting projects. And, and you yeah. know, and, and, and its network does with the likes of, you know, like Lucy and other a lot of other designers. Yes. Um, and it's, I mean, we, we sort of don't really particularly advertise now. It's just a lot of word of mouth recommendation and, and, it, yeah. and it seems to work well for us. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that just to network yourself as much as possible would be my sort of advice really. Um, yeah. And no, you know, I agree. What about you, Lucy? Um, for contractors, I suppose they could contact architects and developers maybe yeah. to get some regular work there that might be repeat work yeah. um, just in this period and definitely network with designers I get quite a few inquiries on Instagram from contractors um, asking if they could price projects um, and yeah definitely any of the networking kind of cluster groups like APL and I'd say yeah APL Bali maybe as well yeah yeah Bali I think we're, we're thinking of maybe in the next few years going uh, at Bali as well. I, I, we've just joined the APL, so I, I think that's like a natural progression, um, but I haven't decided yet. So just to recap on that, I, I reckon, you, like you say, you know, making those inquiries with designers and vice versa. I quite like the idea of calling builders and, and developers as well. Uh, yeah. to source out some work there as well. That's always quite interesting. Mm. But as well, you know, I was chatting uh, with a, another fellow landscaper. He's based in London, did a great work. Um, and he was feeling, you know, like he was getting the inquiries in and they're coming in, uh, but they're harder to, to cross the line. They, you know, once a quote is done, they're harder to, to get through the line and to to get the quote accepted and, and to, to move forward with the project. So that kind of, you know, people want to work the work done, but they're kind of saving a bit of money and they're, they're being careful. So at that point, we always, you know, we talk about pricing and we, we price what they want, but uh, we started to, to deliver the quotes uh, in person to explain this is the, quotes that we discussed about or as spe specified by the designer but we can change this material this material this material and then we can maybe uh, bring the cost down and i find yeah. that that works so well and to, if someone's going to spend 200 grand on a garden 150 grand you you know you want someone to come over with a quote and take the time to explain it really well we we did that on the larger projects and when yeah. when when i was sort of going from doing smaller to the larger jobs i tended to find that by taking and presenting the quote we we probably converted about 90 percent of what of those projects because it's yeah. more personable well exactly that I, you know if you if you bought uh you know i mean you can buy a house for for 200 grand right a small a, a small flat or whatever where we are you wouldn't want to, to just receive a, an email with pictures and that's it. That, you know, that's what you get. Um, you you want to go and visit that. Like, you want you an experience. And I think it's the same with, 
you know, meeting a contractor or designer or you want that person to take the time to come over, walk you through everything and like that, you know, you feel more confident spending the money with that contractor or that designer. So um, those are the little tips that I wanted to bring up and hopefully uh, a couple of people can use them. Who knows? I think testimonials so, are quite good. Well, very useful yeah. as well. Um, if they've got time in a bit of downtime to um, gather testimonials off recent customers. Occasionally I get clients wanting to go and see projects as well. So you could always take the potential client to yeah. see an old another project to show your work because yeah. nothing beats seeing it in real in real life. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, we love doing that. We do it often, and when we finish a project with our clients, often even the clients say, "If you want to bring clients yeah. to our garden to show, like you're more than welcome," and that's always really nice. So mm -hmm. we do it quite a lot, and I think it just puts them in confidence because. You know, if they if they you know they need that confidence to see what we're able to do, it's mm. um it's a great way to do that. I definitely do it. And you know, you said testimonials. Uh, someone told me to do uh, case studies. Yeah. So they're meant to be really good, really good, strong case studies on on projects and uh, and jobs that you, you've done in the past. And that's something I need to get onto as well. Uh, but those are the, the, the little things that are part of the job. But when you're busy, yeah. you don't feel like you need to keep on top of those little things as much. But it's when you're quiet and you're like, ooh, I need to, I need to remember to, to keep those things ticking over. Mm. And uh, often, I don't know about you guys, but you know when you've got six months to a year's work ahead of you, you tend to release the pedal a little bit. Oh, you're yeah. you're not yeah. and suddenly you know you're, you're you're looking at your diary and you're looking at this and you're like oh sugar you know we, we need to bring some more work in i didn't quite realize we were you know eating that year up and um and, and we you know you, you let off the pedal a little bit so yeah those are those are really good tips uh to you know bring the the work in but anyway Let's leave all the hard questions behind us. Uh, and I've got one last thing I'm going to ask you both. It's going to be more, a bit more lighthearted. Um, Mark Lane did it on the... So I had Mark Lane on the podcast. And we had artisan uh, Will. He's a really nice bloke. Uh, and he did this fire question. So I, I tried to do the same. Obviously, I'm not really dyslexic, so my brain and words and trying to write things down, <laughs> it's a bit harder. But I'll try. So who wants to start? Lucy? Yeah. And who wants to start? Your start. So I basically, start. <laughs> I, I, got, I got five and it's like, uh, I don't remember. My wife tried to explain how it's called. So I'll say two things. It's like that or that, and you have to pick one of them okay. anyway. Okay, so, already. <laughs> mo modern or traditional? Modern. Large or small? Mm -hmm. um, like large. Yeah. <laughs> when I broke that down, I was like, oh. But you know, we, we all know what we're talking about. I know about what you mean. So, evergreen or not evergreen? Not evergreen. Uh, water feature or structures or statues? Water feature. Water feature. Based on the last Out show garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, outdoor kitchens or outdoor living spas, like, you know, those kind of things. Um, kitchens. Yeah, so, thank you. I hope that was right. It's the first time I've tried this. Yeah, so. it's quite fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to, I, hopefully I'm going to get better at those. Um, if not, I'll just have to bring Mark Lane every time for him to buy it for <laughs> All right, are you ready, Dan? Yeah, do you know, I, yeah, go on, let's do it. Are you ready? I, I think you're going to be surprised by the answers. Uh, uh, big or small? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, porcelain or natural stone? I think you answered that. But... Natural stone for me, yeah. Um, composite decking, as in millboard or uh, hardwood decking? Um, ugh, tough one. Uh, I, I do like a hardwood deck, yes. if I'm honest. 
same idea. Well, this is a bit more to Makita, Milwaukee, or Dewalt? Uh, I, I know you're a Milwaukee man, but uh, Makita for me. Yeah, Makita. Yeah. Um, hard landscaping or soft landscaping? Uh, tough. Quite, oh, this, uh, um, yeah, I personally can't have a garden without plants. No, uh, no, I say that every every time. The, the plants make a garden. I'd say soft. Soft landscaping. Uh, this one could have gone. I, I'll ask you as well. Uh, clay pavers or natural stone sets? Clay pavers. I'm a fan. No, no, oh, <laughs> disagree. I, I, I'm such a natural stone set kind of guy. I've decided that. that. I. Yeah, but you can have natural stone paving next to clay. Yeah. You and then you got both. <laughs> you got a little bit of both, don't you? <laughs> I, no, you see, like, I like clays. I, I just prefer like a nice limestone or. Or you know, a finely set or, or something stony. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I like stone, just in general. <laughs> no, but that that was a good way to to end um, the podcast uh, this evening. But yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you both for taking the evening to to come on tonight, and thank you for sharing all your your knowledge uh, on on what you do best, and I, I'm really appreciative uh, of that time. Thanks, you, 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 yeah, it's been fun. Really fun. No, it, it was good fun, and I am looking forward to seeing you guys uh, do some more show gardens. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Melvin uh, coming up in the next few weeks, that's for sure, uh, Dan. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing Lucy design some more fantastic gardens. So, um, I think yeah. we're. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at Garden as well, just well, on your yeah. I'm going to say, yeah, I, th I think we're all excited to see you're going to Garden as well as well. Yeah, so should be thank good. you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing, like I was uh, I'm buzzing for it. And, uh, and who knows, you know, build that ladder and, and make more garden, maybe one a year and, and, you know, get better at it and enjoy doing them as well. So uh, yeah. let, let's start something. Hopefully it's, it's something good. <laughs> and I, I don't go on yeah, that by then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you take care. Have a great evening. Thanks, Al. Thank you. Bye. Take care. See Thank you, Dan. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.